Mosley, who everybody called Moses, born around 1933 to a poor family of sharecroppers in Eastern Park, West Virginia. One night, old Moses, when he's around 15, he snuck out to go see a pretty gal he was sweet on. Said he'd worked all week. Bought her a little bit of candy and some sweets and stuff like that to take to her. Well, said when he got up there to her house, he found her a court in another feller. It broke his heart. Well, the next day, he told his daddy he was leaving. So he was going to make his own way in life. Well, said his daddy tried to stop him. But, as the way it goes, you know, that didn't work. So that night, he hopped on a train. Said he hopped off somewhere in the eastern part of Tennessee. So as he walked along, broke, hungry, said he knew he needed work. Said he landed a pretty good job in the old general store. Loading stuff, sweeping, things like that. Said he loved a joke. Said every time you seen you know, old Moses, said he had a twinkle in his eye and a grin on his face. Said he loved people and he was good with people. You know, said he loved a joke, laugh, and always had a smile on things. Well, said that the years just seemed to pass for him. Over the decades, see, saved up, bought him a little old piece of land up in the mountains. And a little bit at a time, he built him a home. So the whole time he was working in that store, he'd always tell folks about his plans about making his home, having his own little patch of land. Well, when he got it, he was telling folks he was fixing to start a building on it. There's a lot of friends and neighbors and things like that come together to help all they could. So they really loved old Moses. Said eventually, as it happens to all of us, he got to be an older fella. Got him some chickens, a couple of cows, and a horse. Well, one day, he went into town. Said he loved to visit. Said he, you know, do that a lot of times. It's a pastime, you know. Said he went down there and he visited folks and stuff. Said on his way home, said he stopped by a little old creek to let his horse get some water. Say, well, the old horse is sitting there getting a drink and everything. Said he bent down there and cupped his hand. Stuck in the old creek. Said he was getting him a sup too, you know. Said good, cool spring water, you know. Well, I said about that time, said he heard crying. Said he looked up. Saw a little boy and a little girl huddled up by a big old oak tree. Said he looked around and didn't see nobody else. But him being the kind, gentle old soul he was, said he just kindly smiled at him. Said he eased up there to him and asked him, said, where's your mom and daddy? Said the little girl who appeared to be the older of the two, said that their mama and their daddy was gone. They had passed. And that they was mighty scared and mighty hungry. 
Well, old Moses, having a big old soft heart, and that just, they said that just broke his heart right there. Well, said the boy looked to be maybe a couple of years her junior. So he wouldn't speak. He wouldn't say nary word. So he tried, you know, picking at him a little dab and stuff like that. Wouldn't say a word. So he tried, you know, joking with him, everything, nothing. So he just looked at the ground. So he grinned a little bit, but that's about it. Well, he asked him, said, well, I know you're hungry now and everything. He said, so, you know, so he said that and everything with that sparkle in his eyes and he grinned. So he told him, said, well, that's, you sure that, you know, you ain't, we had nobody? They said, no, sir. Just us two. Well, he thought, Lord, I can't leave these youngins here by themselves. So he said, well, if you're hungry, come on in. So he said he set him up there on his old horse so they wouldn't have to walk. So he got it on home. Said old Moses took him in, set him down at the table. Got him a plate, you know. So he went over out to, out to the well, got him a fresh, you know, pail of water, brought it in too. He said, luckily, he had some pe uh, some beans and a pone of cornbread that was left over from the night before. He said, bless their little hearts. He said, them youngins, them little angels, said they eat and eat and eat. So they eat till they was about to pop. Said it. He asked them what their names was. And said that the little girl told him, said her name was Jula. Said he told her, said, well, that's a right pretty name. Said he asked the little boy what his name was, but nothing. He wouldn't talk. Said the little girl spoke up and said, His name's Harlan. So after that, Moses went and sat out on the porch. So he went out there and sat back in his old chair, kicked back, enjoying the eating, and said they followed him out there. The little girl sat beside him in an old chair, and the little boy said, you know, so he sat down there on the steps. So the little girl looked up at him. Said, where's your missus? So he told her, said he weren't married. So she told her, said, well, how come? Said, everybody needs to be married. Said, at least that's what our preacher says anyhow. So old Moses got a kick out of that. So he laughed and threw his old head back and just laughed. See, so Taurus said, Yes, I reckon he's right. Said, But the thing is, said, I ain't found me no Mrs. Mary yet. Said, I can't really just, you know, me and her down there in the town just pick me one out. So they sat there and talked for a little while. Said, Old Moses said, He looked there and said, well, honey, why don't your brother talk? She said, Well, mister, so the thing is, so Harlan seen what a bunch of people did there, mom and daddy, and they ain't spoke a word since. She said, Oh, that just broke old Moses' heart, even more than what it already was. There weren't no young around or go have to go through that. So he told him, said, He didn't really, you know, know how to raise youngins or, you know, tend to them or anything like that. He says, after they sat there and talked for a little while, he told them, said, I guess we'll just take you out and take you to your kin. Well, I said, they just kind of looked at one another. He said, 
Well, what's the matter? I said, don't you want to go out to your kin I said, well, thing was, I said, they didn't know where any of them was. I said, they didn't rightly know exactly, you know, where they had even traveled from or where they'd been. I said, the little gal, bless her heart, Said she told him said that they had walked for three days and sometimes at night too before he even found them. Well, a lady that old Moses used to know that used to come into the store run a boarding house. So he went and talked to her. Well, she agreed to take him in. They, however, they didn't see it quite going that way. <laughs> no, not at all. Them youngers, they said they hit on him and everything else. So they, it, 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 he just could not get get him to go. Well, so he finally agreed to let him stay there with him. Said the lady from the boarding house, you know, said he, that she helped him, or helped him get them some, uh, get them some clothes, things like that, you know, got them some shoes and some, you know, clothes and stuff and everything to wear to preaching and to wear during winter time. Well, I said over the years, I said old Moses. He growed to love him youngins like they was his own. Said he always expected somebody to show up one day and claim to be, you know, some of their kin or something like that and take them away from him. And said, what could he do if they did? They'd have a legal right. Now, he didn't have the money to do anything to do anything about it, but nobody ever showed up. Well, said he just figured he'd just pray to the good Lord and raise him the best he could and the best he knowed how. Said oftentimes he'd have to help with, you know, get neighbors or something like that, you know, his advice or things like that. But he done the best he could. Said he'd talk to him about everything he knowed. About everything. Said he even taught him to read and write a little bit. Said back when he worked at the general store, it's a lot of times in the evenings, the store owner's son would come in. Said him and Moses about the same age. And he taught Moses how to read and write a little bit. Well, one time, said that old Moses said he was sweet on a lady. They'd come around and everything else and bring books and stuff like that. And, well, says she come by one evening and old Moses asked if she'd like to uh, come by maybe one evening for a, for a possible date, you know. Well, says she agreed to it. Said one evening, he's all sitting there all, you know, Duddied up and everything, had on his fancy duds, you know, said that uh, she come by there and everything, he was all excited, things like that. Well, he was so excited and everything else, he plumb forgot about the young ones. And they didn't want to have no part in a woman figure coming around and messing up, you know. <laughs> messing up their life with Moses. They said they loved him to death, too. Well, so that evening, when she come by, they said they seen her coming before Moses did. And said Julia slipped out there and called her off to the side and told her, said, oh, said, you need to get out of here quick. Hurry, quick, get out of here. So he's drunk. And boy, said he's a mean drunk. You know, said he's secretly a mean drunk, you know. Said just a slob and everything. I said, get out of here while you can. I 
I said she did. Took off, never would come back. Wouldn't even speak to him. <laughs> Lord mercy. Well, as they grew older, said Harlan, Lord, said he grew into, said be a mighty big feller and a mighty good hunter. Said he was a perfect shot with a rifle or about anything. Said he could fish like nobody's business. But still, never said a word. They said Jula. She started growing in to be a lovely young lady. Said, but still, she could be as mean as a hornet when she got mad. <laughs> Well, old Moses said eventually he grew fond of a lady that they went to preaching with. Said he kind of had his suspicions that might, the youngest might have had something to do with that first ordeal. Said so he decided to court that lady at her house. And said they didn't like it at first. But over time, Said they all grew to love one another. Said the lady's name he dated was Maybell. Said soon Moses and Maybell were married. Said Harlan, said, you know, said he knew how to work the land, you know, tend to the animals and everything else, like it weren't nobody's business, boy. So he pretty much took over running the place and everything else. Well, one day, late in the spring, way up in the evening time, this old fella come a riding up with four other men. Now this man, they, they know he was some type of businessman or something. Cause they said he was dressed fancy, you know, and everything. Had his, said even the, uh, the, you know, saddle and bridle and everything, you know, was just fancy as a be, you know, almost brand new. Didn't hardly have a speck of dust on it. Well, see, like I said, he come riding up with four other men. Said he told old Moses, said, that he loved the area. So he told old Moses, said he wanted to buy his house. So I'm here, I want some buying your house and your land. Well, I said old Moses told him, it ain't for sale. Well, so this kind of angered that old feller. Said so he said, well, let me just tell you something right now, buddy. I said, let's just put it this way. I always get what I want. So he rest down, pat his rifle in his only saddle. He said, one way or another. So he looked over and grinned at the other fellas and everything. So they all kind of snickered and laughed a little bit, you know. So old Moses just looked up at him and said, not this time. Now good day to you. Well, that feller mumbled something or other. So old Moses just ignored him. Said he told Harlan, Julie, and everybody to just ignore him too. Said they's heading back to the house. Well, said about that time, one of them mumbled something else. One of them took a shot at the house. So they all hunkered down there and, you know, jumped and flinched. So old Moses said, hold your fire now. Said, what are you shooting for? This fella grinned and said, I'll be back in two weeks, Mr. Moses. Have that deed dug out and signed. Save us both a little time. Don't worry how about it. And old Moses told him, he said, no, sir. He said, I ain't trying to anger nobody. I ain't trying to rile nobody up or nothing like that. Said, that ain't gonna happen. So well, as they rode off, said he yelled out, Two weeks, Mr. Moses. 
Well, so that worried old Moses. He said he had had run-ins of people like that before. And he had seen quite a few other run-ins, you know. So people like that just weren't no account. But he also knew it could bring a lot of trouble. And old Moses, he was the kind of feller had the heart and spirit. Well, he didn't like a confrontation. He didn't like, you know, any kind of meanness. And he dang sure didn't want to see anybody get hurt. So I said it. He laid in bed many a night worried about that. Well, said when he was supposed to come back, that old fellow was. So old Moses not wanting anybody to get hurt or nothing. So he told Maybell, Jula, and Harlan to go over there to the widow woman's house, the one that run the boarding house, you know. He said, go over there, stay with them. He said he'd talk to them when they come back. Said he told him, said, if I don't come back and get you by dark, don't come back. Just keep on going. Well, said they didn't want to go. Said they tried and tried to argue with him, you know. Said, but he weren't having it. Said he was just so afraid something would happen to him. And it, it, so he just told him, said, no, you're just going to have to go now. That's just how it is. He said, I'll stay and talk to the man, try to reason with him. Well, said, as they's heading out to the old boarding house there, said, Julia, said, you can tell just by looking in her eyes, bless her heart, she's just, Heart broke, just had a lot on her mind. Said old Harlan said he weren't saying a word as usual. Said he was just holding his head down. Said he just kind of look off to the side here and there. Said they rode for pretty good ways. Said after they got a little over halfway to the boarding house. Said Harlan just started crying, he was wiping tears. Said Julie rushed over and, you know, gave him a hug, kissed him on the side of the head and told him it'd be all right. The Lord's watching over him. Said he just grinned at her, nodded, nodded his head, you know. So he leaned over and kissed her back. And said he just pointed forward. He pointed at her and pointed forward. And he jumped out and ran into the woods. Well, Maybell and Julia, they said they was a yelling and a holler at him and begging him to come back. But the more they hollered, the harder he run. Just kept on going into the woods. Well, said they finally made it there to the old boarding house. You know, Said they told the widow woman what was going on, what was happening and everything. Said she told him he's always welcome her. You know, it's all God's people is welcome here. Well, said they sat there and waited. Said they waited and waited and waited. Said while he's waiting, they told him what happened to, you know, you know, with the Harlan and everything, what he'd done, they was, they was just a nervous wreck. They said they sat there and waited for hours and hours and hours. Well, they said just as the sun was setting, said a figure appeared coming down the pathway to the old boarding house, taking his time, so they couldn't really see who it was. So it was old Moses. So they could see it was him. Said so they could see his old floppy hat. 
said, oh, that just tickled them to death. So they jumped up and said they run out on the porch and said they was, you know, holding one another's hands and they jumping up and down and said they was thanking the Lord and everything else, you know. Well, said as he got closer, so he looked up at him and grinned. It weren't Moses. It was Harlan. I said, now this just confused them as I'll get out, you know. So they just couldn't figure out what was going on. And said so he just motioned for them to follow him. Said so naturally, they's asking him 500 million different questions and everything else. But again, all he would do is just motion for him to follow him. Well, said that they followed him. And he led them straight back home. Said when they got back, said they come walking back up into the yard there and stuff. So there said old Moses on the front porch without his hat. Said the old Moses said he was a grinning ear to ear boy. I said, Lord, I wish you could have seen him. Said that old man was a grinning, them eyes was a twinkling. Said he started laughing. Said he started laughing and slapping his leg and everything. Told him, said, Lord, I wish you could have seen old Harlan. Well, again, that just, you know, confused him, you know. Said Harlan, what happened was, said Harlan run up to the back of the house there, there at Moses' from the woods. So he snuck up behind Moses, took his hat off his head, and shoved old Moses into the root cellar and blocked the door. Well, said so Harlan put on the hat and went out and sat on the porch. When that man come over riding up, Harlan stood up and walked down into the yard. Said, we got out there. Said, they asked him, said, Well, now, Mr. Moses, two weeks is up. Said, you got that paper signed? Said, well, naturally, Harlan didn't say a word. Said, he told him, said, I ain't messing with you, Mr. Moses. Said, I'm going to ask you one more time nicely. The next time after that, I'm going to let something else do my talking for me. Do you have the, the deed signed, sir? Said, Again, naturally, Harlan never said nary a word. Said, he turned, said, all right, you try my patience. Well, said that old fella went for his gun. Well, said by the, by the time he did, said old Harlan, who had been practicing with a Moses' old six-shooter, drawed faster than greased lightning. Said and popped that fella right in the shoulder, knocking him off his horse. I said when he did that, so Harlan walked over there and got his weapons off of him. Then he went over there and let Moses out of the root cellar. So then he walked back up to that, that man and spoke. This is my family. It ain't for sale nor taking. You come back again, mister. The next one will be right twixt your eyes. Said old Harlan got that man, set him up, and held a bead on him. He said he made that man take his good arm and write out a paper saying that he'd bought the land from Moses and give it to Harlan. And Harlan made him sign it. And Harlan then turned right around and gave the paper to Moses. He told him to hide it just in case. Old fella tried something funny. Said Harlan again put the bead on him, told him, said, Remember what I told you. Where the next one will be if you come back. 
they said that feller never did come back. They said they sat out there on them old poor old porch many a evening and waiting for him to come back, or at least sending somebody back to get even. But nobody ever did. Now, Tyrell, I sure appreciate you sending that in, brother. But he ends this story with the best part of it. It says, Now, Mr. King, I love your stories and wanted to share this one with you. And my great-grandfather. Now, this story of old Moses, Maybell, and Julia, and Harlan is very real. It's been handed down to my family. They still talk about it. And I remember hearing great-grandpa tell me himself the same story when I was a little bitty fella, just before he passed. It's an amazing story. I'll grant you that. I've always thought so myself. But I just wanted to be clear. My great-grandfather weren't Moses. It was Harlan. Thank you. 